Hello, this is Bruce Ackley from The Ohio State University, and in this presentation I'll be talking about amino acid synth synthesis inhibitors. This is one in a series of talks discussing the mode of action, site of action, and identification chart that was developed as part of the Take Action Herbicide Resistant Management Program. This presentation will be covering the mode of action amino acid synthesis inhibitors. This mode of action includes two groups, a group 2 and group 9. Uh, the site of action is known as the ALS inhibitors and the EPSP synthase inhibitors. Currently, 59 different weed species are resistant to these two sites of action. Um, these sites of action contain six different chemical families, a large number of active ingredients, along with an even larger number of products that correspond to those active ingredients. The take home from this chart is you can buy, be buying any or spraying any of these products but you are actually only spraying from these two sites of action and this one mode of action, which in turn can increase the chances of developing herbicide resistant weeds. Now to just reinforce that idea and look at it slightly differently, we have one mode of action, two sites of actions, uh, we actually have six herbicide families but we listed the most common ones, we have an exponential number of active ingredients all within these two sites of actions, so it's always important to really know what you're spraying. Uh, so for the ALS inhibitors, uh, we have the common names or active ingredient names. These are universal. The trade names and premixes have a lot of variation. Always know what you are spraying. Uh, premixes are products or trade names with multiple active ingredients. Know all the active ingredients in your premixes and which active ingredients are providing control. So we have them broke up within the different families. So again, we have lots of different products. Uh, how do AL ALS inhibitors actually work? So post-emergence or soil applied, uh, short or long residual depending on the product, lots of variation within the site of action, uh, translocated to the growing points, uh, the new growth is injured first, broad leaves or grass is controlled depending on the herbicide, uh, inhibits ALS which blocks the amino acid synthesis, synthesis needed for protein synthesis which stops growth, um, so, in soybeans, the seedling stunting, shortened internodes, and vein reddening are all our common ones. So there's the nice uh, vein reddening, and then there are, there's our shortened internodes. For corn, we have root pruning, seedling stunting, yellow flash in the whorl, shortened internodes, and pinched ears. So, a lot of nice range of uh, injury characteristics for the ALS inhibitors. For glyphosate, same thing. Lots of uh, premixes, common names. Um, know what you're spraying. So, how does glyphosate work? Uh, post emergent, no residual. Uh, translocated to the growing point, new growth is injured first. Non selective control. Uh, inhibits the EPSP synthase. This blocks the amino acid th synthesis needed for protein th synthesis, which in turn stops growth. Um, so, chlorosis to necro necrosis, so anywhere from uh, a little general yellowing all the way to burnt and charred, crisp, dead. Um, chlorotic regions on leaves, those are the white, se white seedlings. Uh, and there's some chlorotic new tissue in the, near the leaf and the growing point. So, for the first site, visit the link for, for more information on site of action education. Uh, for the second site, visit the link to view time lapse photography movies of herbicide injury on plants and other educational weed science videos. Uh, this is number three of 11 with the, in the mode of action, site of action educational series working with the identification chart. Um, Thank you for watching and listening. Thank you to our sponsors for uh, supporting this project.